The gentleman from Texas, Mr. Arrington, is recognized to speak on the amendment. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And uh, Brad Schneider is a great guy. And I think uh, Mr. Schneider's intentions are, are good. And, uh, but I think there's a big disconnect here. Um, if you like uh, the food on your plate, if you like the clothes on your back, if you like the fact that the wheels turn on this economy and the lights come on in this building, you got to make an investment in rural America. You cannot li leave rural communities or the forgotten man in rural communities behind. Um, to, to not have this critical infrastructure is, would be the death nail for the small town America, the small town family farmer and rancher and the independent energy producer, both fossil and renewable. And it would be devastating, not just to rural communities and not just to our economy, but to our national security. These are the folks that are giving us energy independence and food security. And while there is a shortage of healthcare professionals across the country, there's a famine of healthcare providers uh, in rural communities. I mentioned the medical school at Texas Tech University where I served as vice chancellor. It was started to provide services to communities in rural Texas. That was the mission. That was its purpose. And its service area covers 108 counties. We have 254 counties in Texas, 108 counties. You could fit 44 states in this union in the service area of Texas Tech University Medical uh, School. 22 of those counties don't have a physician. We have rural residency programs. And they provide a tremendous service by giving these small towns access to basic care. They encourage and incentivize healthcare professionals to stay in these communities and support them. And um, so I, I would just say that this, this legislation uh, would be woefully inadequate. And when I say there are structural flaws with it, this is at the heart. This is a tremendous disservice to our fellow countrymen. It's a gross disparity in how we invest in every community in this country. And a picture's worth a thousand words, and behind me is a picture of the gaping hole. These are the gra graduate medical uh, uh, education programs. These are the slots as they're allocated today. Uh, it's been mentioned, the statistic of, of over 3,000 counties in the U.S. in 2015, 50% of all GME slots were located in 31 counties, just 18% of the population. Just look at this map. Turn the map, please, so all my colleagues can see this. Look at the disparity. Look at the inequity. We have got to give the forgotten man a voice. I believe that the intentions are good, your heart's good, all that. But, uh, and, and Mr. Kind, I appreciate the, the concerns about the technicalities, but come on, let's get this, let's, <clears throat> you know that what we're trying to do here. Let's not get hung up and fly spec this, because we could fly spec the entire bill. Um, just like we need to get some offsets between here and when this passes, we can do some retooling on the technical side. Let's give rural Americans a voice. Let's invest in the infrastructure and let's keep the next generation of farmers and ranchers and energy producers, give them a fighting chance and give them the will to stay in there and provide the energy independence and food security that we all benefit from and, this, and that is a blessing to this nation, has been, always will be, as long as we speak up for them.